welcome to episode 36. This is the Hello, It's Me, I'm K. Nicole podcast, and I am your host, K. Nicole. So we are going to jump right into our recap. So really, the only thing that I have been working on is Smudge Wholesale, okay? So I have this new Instagram. Make sure you guys go follow. So Smudge Wholesale is going to have all things wholesale, all things mentorship, digital files, all of that kind of stuff that I am offering you guys to help you with your business. So make sure you head over and follow. Today, I am wearing this romper from The Active Avenue. So make sure you go check them out as well. So y'all know I work with Fire and Desire Hookah and I also work with The Active Avenue. So both of those companies are owned by the same person. You can go to either site and use code KNicole to get 10% off. So make sure you go shop because this romper is real cute and rouged. Okay, cute for the summer. (laughs) Make sure you go check them out. Other than that, your girl has been just doing the daily, okay? Working, working on filming, working on editing. So yeah, make sure you just follow all the new Instagrams and stuff down below. And that's really it for the recap. So we're going to jump right in. I have a special guest today. So I have Dames here with me today. What's up? Dames is actually a rapper, a singer, a dancer, a songwriter, okay? <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about his most recent project, Cover Boy, and we're just going to learn a little bit more about him. This is actually our first time meeting, and I love doing interviews like this because I'm just like Same. so interested Same. in learning more. <laughs> so we're just going to be chatting today. It's going to be real fun. We got our wine. You know, we always got to have our oh, wine. Wow. You know, Cheers. we always got to... Cheers at the beginning of the show. Y'all know how we do. So yeah, I'm going to let Dames introduce himself so we can just go ahead and jump right in. Um, What's up, y'all? I'm Dames. Um, I am, like she said, I, I, I sing, I rap, I dance, um, I write, I edit. Um, I've been doing this music thing for about seven plus years now and um, just put out my fifth project. Um, it's an EP called Cover Boy. And um, yeah, I'm here to, to talk about it. I'm, I'm super excited about it. So yeah. It looks really cool. Like Thank the you. cover art. I was like, all right, we're going to have you. to talk about this. We're going to have to learn about this. Make sure y'all <laughs> go follow him. Yeah. Let them know in the beginning because, you know, some people tune in at the beginning. They come back later. They might not make it to the end. Gotcha. Where can they find you on social media? For sure. So yeah, y'all can uh, check me out at Dames uh, everywhere. D-A-M-E-Z, um, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, all social media, and that's also you know my 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 stage name. So, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, uh, YouTube, wherever you listen to music, um, just type in Dames, and there I'm, there I am. Or you can just Google Dames, and I'll be right there too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just hit me up on Google. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Search engine. That's that's lit. No, that's right. So yeah, let's talk about your project. So this is this is your newest project. How how has that been? You know, this is the point in time where we're pushing it. We're talking about it. Y'all know mm-hmm. we put so much work into stuff and then we want to share it. We want other people to see right. it and kind of react to it and feel something from it. Right, right. Um, you know, this project for me it's like quarantine, of course, like did a lot of um I don't want to use the word damage, but it, it kind mm-hmm. of definitely like put a lot of like damper on like a lot of people's lives. Of course. Right. And so for me, um, not only did it put a damper on like my personal life, but it also put a damper on my, you know, professional and creative life. Um, and I just kind of hit a point where I just lost, you know, like motivation. Yeah. Um, my last project came out right before quarantine hit and like, um, you know, the rollout and the kind of the things that I had planned for that project just kind of were just taken from me because of yeah. because of covid and so it kind of really put me in like a a pretty a pretty uh bad space creatively and um and then I just kind of I was in a bad place for a while and um I ended up landing um another magazine cover which this time was the biggest one so far uh, it was out magazine and um when they I think when that happened, it was kind of like a, a, a turning point or some type of like trigger mm-hmm. that kind of yeah, helped like me. Yeah, like a spark. Yeah, like a mm-hmm. spark that kind of helped me like um, pick myself back up and want to get back into it. And so from there to now, it was just kind of like building off of that, getting back up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So were you modeling like full time before the music or like how did no. the magazine cover start? <laughs> because <laughs> no, um, I mean, modeling is always something that like I always like been interested in doing them I mean, i've always like done like shoots and stuff here and there even mm-hmm. like maybe maybe even before yeah maybe before i did my first project i was doing like photo shoots but i never like took it serious it's like yeah. oh, i'm a model you know what i mean it's always just been kind of like 
something I did, you know, for for my music. If mm, that makes sense. So. Okay, gotcha. I think that's dope. <laughs> Thank Cover you. of a magazine, please. Thank you. Thank Five you. of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I feel like we all kind of went through that though with the pandemic. Like Mm -hmm. I just lost all motivation at one point and just found myself kind of confused. I'm like, okay, so what next? And just the fact that we kind of didn't know what was next in the world, we couldn't really decide what was next for us. So I mean, now we're just in this crazy space where it's like, yeah, I mean, things are kind of open right now. So we're kind of starting to move around a little bit and I'm kind of at a place where I'm like, look, I don't want to miss out on anything else. Right. Honestly. Right. Like, exactly. <laughs> the FOMO is kicking in crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like looking at people because there was a point in time where I would see, you know, things happening and there's a lot of stuff that I would want to be included in. It's just like, no, I'm going to stay inside. But it's like now we're just kind of like, okay, we know kind of how to maneuver our way through yeah. to where we can yeah, yeah. be out and be present and still, you know, be safe. Be I mean, safe. Right. Right. We outside. Hey. I'm, hello. And I'm, it's summer. We're outside. It's summer. We outside. You know, I, I'm, I'm vaccinated. So I feel, I definitely feel like I'm, um, you know, of course it's not a complete like yeah safety, you know, shield or anything, but. For sure. But um, I definitely feel a lot more um, comfortable just like being in, in spaces that mm-hmm. I probably haven't been in in like right. over a year. Right. Right. So. Yes. So um, yeah, I actually got a song called "We Outside." That's kind of I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of celebrating like the whole like end of this whole kind of like shutdown type of like lifestyle and just kind of like you know just it's just a it's just a feel good record of just like wanting to just you know be outside and have a good time. Like we spent so much time inside, we spent so much time like not having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we owe it to ourselves to just get out and, and enjoy life. It was, mm-hmm. a, it was a short. Yeah, it was a transition for me yeah. because I became such a homebody and it's like I went outside one time and it kind of just like drained me completely. I was yeah. like, wait. Yeah. We had to take baby steps <laughs> You know what's it. crazy? Like I talk about we outside and all that, but like it's the same thing for me. I've become such a homebody in the past year and then I, I moved into my own place during quarantine and like mm-hmm. I spent, you know, a lot of time getting my place to be, you know, my 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 sanctuary, you Hello. know, my, my safe space. And yeah. so I love it. I love being there. You and know, I don't like leave. leaving. Exactly. So <laughs> it's like, uh, I wanna be outside, but I love being inside too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, definitely trying to find that balance like myself. Yeah. I did the sure. same thing. That's what I was like, we moved I moved during quarantine and I was like, look, we just have to set this house up, have everything that I need. Everything you need, right? TVs. It's said, important. Look, I got to get a sound bar so we can feel like we have the movies and we got to do that. Right. I need all the you know, <laughs> hookah everything. stuff in the house so I don't got to feel mm-hmm. like I got to be outside doing that. <laughs> right, right. We fully set up in here. We don't yeah. really got to go anywhere if we don't want to. That's what's up. And then we got the pool outside. I'm like, y'all, we can literally yeah, just, it's you literally, know, <laughs> you got stay everything here. You need. Right, right. No, that's what's up. Well, that's great. So how do you feel like, you know, the support has been? Do you think that the support on your end has changed at all since this whole thing happened? Like you just kind of put out this new project. Do you feel like people are, they're reacting to it the way you want to? Like, do you think you're going to be doing some performances and... Yeah, you know. um, definitely. I actually just did a, a performance for a Moby Festival, which is a really dope, um, really dope festival that, that they do every year. Um they're, they're based in New York City, mm-hmm. um, uh, mobilizing our brothers initiative. But it was a my first time doing a virtual festival, virtual performance. Um, so I think during the age of COVID, um, I feel I feel I'm proud. Like you know, just like I feel like if I would have like came out of this whole COVID thing or came on the other side of this whole like COVID thing and like looked back and been like. Damn, I didn't get to do a virtual like performance. I think I probably would have felt a little kind of You would have way. regretted that. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, so, we would have had to have done one of those. Right. At least one, right? Yeah. So it's it's dope just to even be able to just say, like, yo, like, I was an artist through through COVID mm-hmm. and I got to do a virtual performance and it was actually dope. And it was my first one. And it was a lot of work because um it was definitely like my biggest production uh production like the production value is just definitely like next level i mean like i never had to work with like lighting and mm-hmm. and um you know led screens and 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 yep. and all of these things and so i i i designed my own led visuals um cuz i edit videos and so i took a, a new challenge and like hey let me i i feel like i could do it so i did it um i came up with like the lighting choreography um the show set the looks 
Um, it was it was it was a, the sound effects um, on each of the other performance tracks. It was, it was a lot of work, but um, I feel like it, it turned out really dope. So I'm excited to do to do some more performances and, and continue to push push the record because it's it's dope. I feel like it's um it's definitely worth worth pushing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I am not mad about the virtual performances. Okay, because yeah. I was we I mean all of us we were like kind of tapped into a lot of stuff, and mm-hmm. I felt like from the artist perspective, it was almost like even better because so many more people could be a part, a part of, of it. it. Right. We all yeah. not flying out to New York exactly. or to Atlanta or whatever. Exactly. So of course, I I, was... of course, you always like as an artist. I think you always and probably as a consumer. I feel like you definitely always want that like live. Yeah. Like I do feel. miss it. Right. Like this, that do. that whole like because it's, it's it's a different experience. But also, like you said, just meant for everybody to be able to enjoy mm-hmm. a performance, and then with it being virtual, you have a little bit more time to get it to to be nice. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not so. It's not so much pressure. It's just like, oh, you got to just live and, you know, it's yeah. like you can actually, you know, make it right. And so, um, yeah, it's dope. I'm just, I'm just, like I said, I'm just, it just feels good to be able to just say I was able to experience that and that it, it turned out so dope and that I, I had such a heavy hand in, you know, the creative aspect of my, my set and, and that I was able to show the world, you know, what I'm able to do and, you know, just want to keep going. Keep getting bigger and, and going up. That part. Yeah. <laughs> the only way from here is up. That part. The only place we can go is up. So what is kind of like your creative process? Like when you're when you're making these projects, like where do you kind of start out? Um it's weird because I feel like I've I say this all the time because I've I feel like I have I've, I've I've done five projects and so like there's like it's like a ton of music that I've put out so far since 2014 that people could consume and kind of get an idea of like my artistry. Um, but I feel like there's still so much and so much of me that I haven't really been able to like, you know, share or, or, um, you know, really channel. And so, um, I'm 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 all over the place. Like I'm I'm music Mood. is just music is just like right. I'm I'm literally all over the place. Music is like my life, it's my my pulse. So I listen to all different types of types of shit all the time. And I'm always um just all over the place. And so it, it it's it's really hard for me to really like sit down and say oh, and decide on like this type of like concept or this type of sound. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, but I think for this project though. I think the mindset was definitely. I was in such a, a, a dark space last year that I needed to get myself out of that. Right. And I and I felt like there was a lot of people out there that was in that kind of not in the same space, but in a similar space where they kind of needed something to, you know, just excite them again to make them feel better about life again. And so, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of songs that I wrote during that time that weren't, you know, so 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 happy and and turned up, and it was the kind of like the opposite side of that, but. Um, having to decide of okay, this is the route I want to go. You know, it's summertime; things are opening back up. This is the music that people want to hear right now. You know, not to say that that music won't ever come out because I'm sure it will, just mm-hmm. when the timing is right. And yeah. so, but I think the creative process this time was just like you know, once I decided like what I wanted to, what I wanted to make people feel, and what I wanted to feel myself because mm-hmm. I just I needed to get myself to a better place before I could try to make somebody else feel better, right? Yeah. So. um yeah, I just wanted to, to feel better about life and I wanted to make other people feel better about life. And I just felt like, you know, why not just make some music that people can 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 turn on and ride to and, and feel good and move and dance and party. And yeah, because mm-hmm, we outside. We outside. We outside. We outside. <laughs> we outside. <laughs> Literally. How old are you? I forgot to ask that. Uh, I just turned 27. OK. Yeah, 27 Club. 27 Club. Why are we like the babies everywhere we go. <laughs> We're yeah, like I'm younger getting, than everybody. I'm man. getting old, man. I'm getting old. I feel the same way. But um, it's it's all good though. You know, I feel you know as I get older, I used to. I still am. I ain't gonna lie. But, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I would say I used to feel like kind of weird about getting older, and I still do. But I feel like I'm trying. I, I feel like as I get older, I, I appreciate just like the wisdom. Mm-hmm. You know, I lost my brother when I was 17, and so, mm-hmm. and I was a year younger than him. So I had like since until that happened, I had always done everything literally a year after he did. And so, you know, when he passed, it was like, whoa, you know, like he was a freshman in college, I was a senior in high school, having to like graduate high school and go to, go to college and like do a lot of the things that he didn't get a chance to do. It's just been 
kind of weird. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, I, life is short. I do, I do know that. And so yeah. I feel like each, 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 each year I can get a chance to experience life and, and make new experiences and learn new things and meet new people and, and inspire new people and just like share my art or just like give more of myself to the universe. That's all I, that's all I care about. Absolutely. So let's talk about your project. Yes. Cover boy. Cover boy. Cover boy dames. Been calling him cover boy to everybody. And I'm like, who are you interviewing today? I'm like, oh, the cover boy. They're like, who is that? I'm like, oh, I'll just send it to you. Like, I'll just show you. That's, I mean, that's just the easy way to remember. It's so fitting for you. So Thank yeah, you. let's talk about it. Yeah, um, cover boy. I mean, so it's a nine. It's nine songs. Um, my last few projects were uh, full length LPs, uh, albums, if you will. Um, and so I wanted to um, kind of go back to where it all started and do an EP and do something, you know. A bit more short and sweet and mm. concise and um you know something a bit more bite sized but still like you know quality of course still I'm always gonna give you quality I'm always gonna give you you know some good some good tunes but um yeah, this one was just important for multiple reasons I wanted to get back outside get everybody else back outside and um just just uh just grow you know I wanted to grow I wanted to to have fun and um so yeah it's nine songs it's 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 kind of like um, a similar vibe throughout. You know, there's a lot of like turn up and party records, but there's still some, there's still some real shit sprinkled out throughout. You know, there's still some, there's still some, uh, some, 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 something to help you to make you think. And, you mm-hmm. know, there's still some of my personal experiences in there. So it's, uh, I feel like it's 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 a nice body of work for the summertime. Balance, we love that. Yeah, you know, we for got sure. we got the the turn up, and then we got the. The creative, like the real, sit down and think about what's going Yeah, say. yeah, for sure. Oh, we love that. So you did a video, mm-hmm. and how was that whole experience? It was dope, you know. So like, I edit videos, and so I edit a lot of my own content. And so this was the first uh, music video in some years now that I like didn't edit myself. I was about to say you did that. <laughs> so it was like it was um it was kind of challenging to you know like have to you know take a step back and just let somebody else fully, yeah fully you know of course i of course i'm i'm gonna have a lot of like cuts and stuff and you know i'm, I'm gonna have the final say so for the mm-hmm. final edit but just not being in the chair editing myself you know and having somebody else deciding on the shots and stuff like that um but it was dope you know i trusted him with the um I had a really dope videographer we worked really hard on the on it and i knew that i wanted i didn't just want to shoot a video uh, for the song and just that beat. I knew I wanted it to be um, something. To, I wanted it to have a little bit more substance. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, you know, since this was going to be my first like visual back um, from quarantine and from kind of picking up where I left off, I kind of wanted to give people like an update on what, you know, what I kind of, what I've been going through and just like what, what it took to get to the cover boy dames part. So it kind of all makes sense, you know, when they see, the the project and they see and when the song cuts on the video you know you can kind of get like a more of a backstory and it just it just means a lot more it makes you feel a lot more proud and it just feels a lot more triumphant and so the video i mean it took about two three weeks to to finish uh, because there was so much that we had to do and then i got injured on the first day that we started shooting oh my lord <laughs> no so like there's a there's a shot of the video where i'm running on the track and I jump a hurdle and I fall and bust my ass, and mm. <laughs> and um, it wasn't even supposed to be that wasn't even supposed to be in the video. We had already gotten what we needed, like the shot that we needed for at the track. We had already gotten. <laughs> it was just we was about to leave, and I saw the hurdle, and I'm like, hmm. Let me. Oh, you see what happens when we be doing right. stuff we ain't supposed to be doing. <laughs> I'm, I don't know why I thought I was Jesse Owens. You saying both? I don't know who I thought I was, but I tried to jump this hurdle and I bust my ass. Oh and, my goodness! Um, I injured myself pretty bad. My arm, my left arm, I'm left handed, so oh. I was out of commission for a while. And then I got sick on top of that, um, mm. on top of being injured. So yeah, it was a lot. So the video was kind of put on hold. Um, things were kind of lot. The locations had kind of gotten um, scrapped. There was a lot of like just a lot of hiccups, but um, I think. When we worked, when we actually did start shooting and we, like, it got made a lot of stuff work out really, really dope. Um, there's a scene in the video where we're literally in Barnes and Nobles and we're, like, filming the video inside Barnes and Nobles. And we 
like we had so much trouble um, trying to find a location to do the the scene that we wanted to do, and and that just kind of ended up being like a last minute idea, and it just worked out. I mean, they just let us shoot. They were so they were so cool, and I mean, they just they didn't bother us at all, and so it was dope. So like it was a lot of things that just that that turned out really really dope, despite all the hiccups that that we were were faced with um i think the 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 finished product is 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 super dope it's something that i think i'll be proud of like years down the line Mm -hmm. and that's always the goal yeah not just thinking about now but how will i feel about this you know 10 years 10 years from now yeah i love that you you know you said that because i be trying to tell people i'm like look everything's not always peaches and cream okay the right. end product might look real good right but it's but... a lot <laughs> it's a lot injured like Man. please you know there's so much that goes into it and yeah i mean that's real life like that's why i mean even when we were in school like they had so many regulations like with us on set like we couldn't wear certain things or do certain things because that's so common to yeah. like get hurt yeah yeah it while is. you're on set that's crazy yeah especially when it's like you don't have like a stunt double when you. Oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> you're honestly, trying to do certain stuff. Honestly, mm. like I, I'm, I'm the type of person where I'm just like I'm a really adventurous type of type of person. So mm-hmm. I really like I like the, the the idea of doing a stunt or some type of something is just like it's it's exciting to me, you know. And all my all my friends and my mama always be like, "Boy, if you don't sit there somewhere <laughs> and like Please. get a stunt double or something," but you'll you be know, stressing people out. I can already tell. Man, I'll be stressing everybody out. I stress everybody out. But hey, it's it's all it's all for it's the all art. Love. It's all for the art, and yeah. it's all love for sure, for sure. Anything for the shot. We we literally we live by that. We live by that, right? Mm-hmm. We live by that. I mean, hey. I'd rather be like that than just settle for, settle for something. You're right. Like you're so, right. Well, cheers to that. Cheers to that. I'm glad you made it out of the video alive and well. Right. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Because that sounds intense. Yeah. It and was. when I had just had a, um, it, and that's why it's like I really got to, Since then, I bet I definitely been moving a lot more carefully because mm-hmm. I talk about it in the actual video itself i talk about just how traumatic over year 2020 was for me and mm-hmm. like um you know i had two two i had two injuries last year um i had the first one i got into like a um a really bad accident totaled my car it was like a, a 14 car pile up oh my god on 285 yeah it was the scariest shit of my life but hmm. um yeah so i got injured from that real bad and then well actually it was actually i was luckily um it wasn't a bad injury but i was still kind of out for a few weeks and then mm-hmm. a month later um <laughs> so embarrassing <laughs> i'm trying to learn a tiktok dance oh my goodness and i dislocate my no. kneecap no and i have to ride in an emergency room i have to, I have to ride the ambulance to the emergency room get my kneecap popped back into Ooh. place and i had to wear this like <sighs> leg cast for like a month it was man it was bad it was yeah, so I'm um I'm definitely tired of injuring myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why does this sound like? Yeah, I gotta. I it's gotta, happening way too often. <laughs> yeah, I gotta take it easy, but um, hey, I'm that's just... that outgoing adventurous spirit. But yeah, y'all see what sure. y'all see what be going on behind the scenes. We try to do TikTok. We like... try to do we try to do it all, and it's like you know you gotta just take it easy. You yeah, take it. I definitely am am listening to my body and being a lot more cautious about stuff these days, but. <laughs> Please, <laughs> we're too young. Man, I keep I was telling so myself scared that. To dance, like after that, after that injury happened with my knee, I, mm. didn't, I didn't dance for like months because I was just terrified. I would have been traumatized. I was too. so terrified to even walk. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'll see y'all in like <laughs> right. a couple months. <laughs> Need some but I love space. dancing. I mean, I love dancing. It's, just, it's a part of my like brand. It's a part of like who mm-hmm. I am. It's something that I just always loved to do since I was a little kid. So. Mm. I feel like even if I had broke something, I still would have. Yeah, you would have bounced back from that yeah. at some point. But yeah, we just got to work through that little trauma. For sure. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, too. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. It's an interesting story. It's an interesting journey that you've been on. Yeah, leading up to this whole cover boy shit, right? It's, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's a, it's a, I, would, I would choose that word, too. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Mm. So what, besides being injured, oh my God, Mm -hmm. what are some other challenges that you 
face, like as an artist. I mean, I kind of feel like we talked about that lack of motivation because of the pandemic, but that can happen at any time, honestly. Yeah. And I recently have kind of felt myself hitting a brick wall when it comes to being creative and Mm -hmm. making content and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just kind of feel like, you know, I mean, I document my life. So I'm a vlogger and, you know, I have four businesses. So I'm kind of just like always doing the same thing though. It's kind Mm -hmm. of repetitive. So Mm -hmm. it's like the things that people want to hear from me, they kind of want to hear the same things over and over again. So I try to like think about different ways to say things or like how can I kind of present this topic in a different way so that kind of like challenges me but it's also exhausting so I kind of you, like um like how do you what's your how, what's your way of like getting re-inspired it's tough you know I feel like well so this year in March I did a rebrand mm-hmm. kind of you know I just wanted to like refocus on myself because so, my businesses were kind of like consuming my whole life and yeah, I yeah. told you earlier I'm a workaholic at heart so I don't really know how to turn it off, Um, but I have my cosmetics line and that has kind of like taken off. That's like my booming business. And congratulations. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to do the best I can, Mm -hmm. you know, and I have these personal products that I've created, you know, and put so much time into and conceptualized whole collections and everything. But then I also do wholesale. So I'm like actually helping other people start their own business and, you know, providing inventory for them. So that side of my business kind of took over and I kind of like let that consume my whole life. And I kind of lost sight in what I wanted for my actual business, like my brand itself, if that makes sense. So I decided to do this whole rebrand. Like, look, I want to focus on me. I want to help y'all, but I want to focus on me. So it was kind of hard to kind of make that switch. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, for me, when it's time for me to get re-inspired, I I follow a lot of content creators. So I like watch YouTubers and, you know, influencers and stuff. And they're kind of just like normal everyday people, even though they do have a following, they don't, you know, consider themselves celebrities or anything like that. So I'm like, these are like normal everyday people that decided one day they want to pick up a camera and like document their lives and share it on the internet. And I watch a lot of people that are really leveling up right now. So I think just like watching some of my favorites is kind of what helps me to realize like, okay, if you put in that work, if you go back to that motivation that you had before to be consistent and to work through, you know, the challenges, then you could be at this spot that this person is at now. Because I kind of like started following a lot of people when they were smaller, like when that kind of thing just started. So it's crazy to like watch other people grow. So I'm like, it's possible. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely possible. It's possible. It's just, you know, what what kind of work am I going to put in? And I think that I, I pride myself in just, you know, doing everything. So I have my podcast, I have my YouTube channel, I'm, you know, vlogging, I have my businesses. So it's just like a lot of stuff. And it's impossible for me to kind of like cater individually to every single thing, every single thing. at all times. Right. Because so, we're all, we're just humans. You know? Right. We're just, we're just, we're just <laughs> Look, humans. We're not built to like do all this stuff. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. But no, you should be very, very proud of yourself. I am proud. I'm very proud. But I definitely do hit those moments where it's like, it's, it's creatively challenging to kind of keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, and I think right now, you know, I'm getting re-inspired. I feel a lot better now. I think that I'm outside more, not even going to lie, like yeah. going outside, getting some fresh air because yeah. I have been working from home Yeah, ever it's since. Needed. It's needed. That, yeah. That, I'm like, I have been air. working from home ever since. I work like 12 hour days or more, you know? So it's just kind of, I fell into this kind of, I call it toxic. I'm like, I fell into this toxic routine of, yeah. you know, Working from home, working ridiculous hours and not knowing how to turn it off. I made one step in the, like, I made one good step, like Mm -hmm. one step forward when I decided to uh, get an office outside Mm -hmm. of my house. So I do have a separate space that I go to and work for my businesses and stuff. But I mean, content and everything, I can still very much function at home, just Mm -hmm. not for my businesses. So it's still a little challenging when, you know, you can't really... Yeah. Differentiate between work and home and like turn that that work mode off. Man, that's so it's so important. I, I like that you said that though about like um like watching other people grow and knowing that and get and kind of getting inspired to knowing that it's possible. Mm-hmm. But I think sometimes it's like it's easy for us to like see other people growing and we kinda um I think what helps me sometimes is like taking a step to 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 it's so hard though, but like just taking a step back and looking at far like we've come, yeah, you know, like looking at our own growth. Sometimes it's like it's hard to do because it's like 
of course we see ourselves as as, as we see ourselves as so far from where we really want to be mm-hmm. right but when we take a step to look at like where we started at and like where we are now it's like damn like you know you really have grown a lot and yeah it's, it's something to be proud of it's something that i feel like i kind of pull some inspiration from at times when i get in those moments and it's like well you've come this far and so you know there was a point in time when i first was starting out or whatever and for years even where i didn't even think that i would ever like you know, do some of the things that I that I've done. You know, at this point in my in my career, so you know, it's it's so much so much more work to do. But I feel like part of what helps me like stay inspired or to get re inspired is to just kind of try to look at my own growth and just mm-hmm. say, you know, hey, like you've come a long way and you should be proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I definitely feel that, and that's one reason why I really love that I started doing YouTube because I have like this whole journey that yeah, you can, you can like, literally, literally go and watch your growth right yeah. it's dope it's people always can dope. watch the whole story unfold of like mm-hmm. yeah i've been filming for a very long time so you can kind of see like basically every step of the way yeah so i love that i mean i think like docu like people that like document their life i think i think more people should do it yeah people don't realize how short life is and how important that stuff is and, mm-hmm. and you know, we can't remember everything either so we i can. like go back to some of my old videos i'm like oh my god do you I forgot remember? that shit. Yeah, I'm like, wow, that's so crazy. <laughs> right, right. No, that's facts. So Big emotional. Facts. It's really emotional. But yeah, a creative block is real. Okay, y'all. It happens to the best of us. Yes. And sometimes it's frustrating because you really don't have time to like be dealing with that at the moment. Yeah. It's like we're kind of on a timeline here. Right. Yeah, kind of stuff that right. I do. <laughs> like, you know, it's it sucks sometimes, but definitely. Yeah. I do. Like I, I look to others and I kinda honestly like life got so crazy to a point where it was like even seeing certain people was kind of doing the exact opposite for me. Like it was kind of making me more envious. Like you know how mm. you see someone, you're like, wow, like especially the people that you can tell are like half assing their way through a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, wow, so these are the people that are like blowing up right now and the right. people that are getting all the attention. <laughs> so I really had to kind of cut back on what I was consuming when it came to social media and the content that I was looking at because it was getting really frustrating. And it's yeah. like, I mean, social media is a place where you can paint whatever picture you want to paint. So mm-hmm. I started to like kind of realize that like, girl, just unfollow certain people. Don't look at their content because this is just not the content you want to see. But then you also got to remind yourself too, you know, nothing, they say nothing, nothing great comes easy. Correct. Or overnight. So, you know, the people that, that, that do blow up super fast and they, it ain't gonna last. they don't, they don't, they don't really sustain, you Mm-mm. know, I know I, I look, I, I think about that all the time. I see so many artists that literally would drop like one song or one project and then like, you know, they're, they're on all these big sites and all mm-hmm. these, you know, opportunities and it's, it's dope. And it's like, and you look at yourself and it's like, damn, it's been seven years and I, you know. It's just like that. It ain't that one song <laughs> but, yet for us. Right. But it's just not my time yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the more that I work hard at my craft and the more that I um, stay focused and I work hard and I feel like the more ready I'll be when it is my time. Mm-hmm. And then when it's my time, I'm not going to be just yeah. here for one year or two years. You know, I'm going to have some longevity. And so that's that's also important. See, that was a word because so many people look at me and they're like, oh my God, I want to be like you. Oh my God, I want to have my business like this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, be careful what you wish for, Mm -hmm. okay? Because you might get that when you're really not ready. Like, Right. Right. Exactly. I didn't know what I was doing. That's the thing. So it's like, it was great. You know, in a sense, you're ready because it wouldn't have come to you if it wasn't your time. But Mm -hmm. mentally, like- are you really prepared for this to like sustain this right. by yourself? So and that's and that's and that's that's an, it's crazy. Like the more I the more I do this, the more I try to find like inspiration in like the 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 strangest places. Because even in that like headspace, it's like okay, um, you know, I'm not where I really want to be, mm-hmm. but but like it's just I don't know. It's just inspiring to just like pull just to just pull from from anything. Like okay, like now I can just go harder. So like now. When I'm sitting there and compl- or complaining in my head about not being where I want to be, let me just work at it right now. Yeah. Let me use this energy to 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 work at it, so I can be even better. And when I get there, I'll be even better off than I was. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, 
Yeah, I just try to use like just anything to just pull inspiration and try to make myself better and just keep growing and growing. I do believe that the harder that you work, that the more successful you'll be. You know, I come from, I, I feel like I come from the the old school of, of, of you know, watching the greats. And so I think my my mindset mentality is a little, a little different, a little old school, but yeah. I do believe that the harder you work, the more successful you'll be. So. I believe that too. For sure. That's my motto. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want any shortcuts because I yeah. just feel like for me, it's been so rewarding and I, I appreciate all the challenges because I have seen like, okay, yeah, this is what could possibly happen. So let's keep that in the back of our mind. It's right. just all learning exactly. experience. And exactly. Mm-hmm. You need that. Honestly, yeah, because it don't always go smooth, y'all. It's... It don't go most of the time. It don't. It literally, like, <laughs> like we make it look good. Yeah, like honestly, most of the time, what you see is literally like after so <laughs> much blood, sweat, tears, starting over, hiccups, mm-hmm. rescheduling. I mean, it's it's literally so much that goes into just even the smallest thing. Yeah, you know? and kind of like. On my platform, I talk about a lot of the struggles because the people that I watched when I was first starting, they didn't really talk about that part. Like nobody really wants to highlight, you know, oh, what went wrong or what did I do wrong or, you know, what could have been done better or Mm -hmm. just any of the hiccups. So ever since I first started, I've kind of been like sharing that part of my journey too. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, I don't want y'all to be looking at me and then decide that y'all want to do this and then y'all get into this and y'all start experiencing stuff that I ain't never talking about. Right. <laughs> and then y'all come and looking at me like, oh, you painted this pretty picture. Because I just picture, hate yeah. that. I feel like that's, you know, what a lot of people do. I'm like, look, I'm not painting no picture for y'all. This is real life. Right, right. This is what happened. And this is how we're going to move forward. Like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I talk about the struggle all the time because sure. it's always something. It always is. And I feel like as much as, as, as much as confident and as fun and as like vibrant as a lot of my music is, there's mm-hmm. still a lot of my music that is still very transparent and still very like real and, um, you know, just heartfelt and just coming from the soul. And, um, there's a, there's a, I, I love, I love that. That's my favorite part about my artistry is the fact that. I have such a diverse catalog of songs that can make you feel different things. But, um, you know, even like on the project, there's a song called uh, Pretty Player Shit where I'm kind of talking about just that, just that resilience of just from being, starting out and not even believing in yourself and mm. ha- not feeling like anybody else believes in you e- either and getting to a, a, a point where, you know, you, you, you went from not believing in yourself to knowing that you got this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and 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 knowing that other people know that you got it too, you know what I'm saying? And just like, mm-hmm. and just looking back and, and, and kind of patting yourself on the back for, for not giving up and for, and for you know, being resilient and persevering. And um, it's one of my favorite songs on the project because it kind of takes a step away from the turn up and gives you... You know, a little bit of uh, some, 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 something real to think about, but it's still, it's still play it all. You know, it's still confident. It still makes you feel good. So, um, yeah, so I love that. I love that we can look. I love to just like just the creative outlet in general because yeah. I, you know, we I went to art school. We went to art school, so creatives at heart, right? And then you get out of school and then it's like, okay, now we're in the real world, but we kind of still have that same, you know, that same creative streak. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I obviously. just love, you know, <laughs> I love dope. projects that yes. still yeah. do challenge me. Cause you know, some people, I mean, some people literally like with their businesses and stuff that they do, it's very cut and dry, you know, mm-hmm. like straight to the point, mm-hmm. no real thought behind it. Oh, this looks pretty. That's it. Yeah. And, you know, I just appreciate that. We kind of like take more time to like, like you said, give it more substance and make it more meaningful even to us. Yeah. Because yeah. we got to people... release. We got to let that, we got to have that creative outlet sometimes. Yeah. And as much really as all like, the time. And, then, and it's crazy because as much as we be in like, in our like heads or, you know. And our feelings, even about certain things, there's so many people that are going through that same thing. Yes. That that need to see us and hear us talk about it, mm-hmm. so they can be like, "Oh, okay, so I'm not alone in this." Yeah. Because right that's that's what it feels like a lot of times when you're going in that that headspace, you just feel really alone, but you're not. There's so many other people going through that same thing, and I feel like if they have more to look up to, more representation, you know, more. Um, you know, just more somebody that reminds them of themselves that that they can say, "Hey, this person, I can see myself in this person, and this person is going through this." And 
he's able to 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 maneuver or navigate or whatever. Maybe I could I could too. And, mm-hmm. and that's, that's, that's it's, it's always important because I didn't I don't feel like I really had um had somebody that I could look up to and say, hey, I see myself in this person. Mm. You know all the way or enough yeah. to really feel like you know so i feel like now things are a lot easier for like the youth because they have so much more just the society is just different it's a lot more accepting and i feel like there's a lot more representation in general for mm-hmm. people to have something to look up to so that's important that's like my whole that's the whole mantra behind my business if i can do it you can too that's mm-hmm. kind of just like how i brand it myself because I mean, I was like, y'all, I'm just a regular person. <laughs> right. Like, y'all, I'm just, right. just a regular, regular person. Right. Like, and I decided that I wanted to do this, and I just kept working until I was able to do it. Yeah, so. I mean, you just got to have a dream and just go for it. I mean, like, I'm literally, like, right. just a country boy from Mississippi. Like, literally, like, you know, I moved to, my family moved to, to Georgia when I was six, and I always just, like, loved music, and I went through some some pretty, uh, some pretty, pretty rough stuff like in my childhood adolescence teenage years that you know would have I feel like would have broken a lot of people and um but I my love and passion for music just just it just was so strong it actually grew even I feel like it grew even bigger once Mm -hmm. I went through those things because it was I felt like it I kind of feel like it was it was only thing I kind of had at one point to to kind of save me or to or to make me feel something and so um yeah, I just kind of kept going, and like I feel like I I didn't have any co-signers. I never had no. Um, I didn't. I don't come from a family of music. I don't come from like a family of like you know. Really, I don't really come up really from a really successful family, and so um, you know, I, I definitely feel like I, I'm showing people that like, hey, like you said, if I can do it, you can too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just put your mind to it. Work hard. Definitely work hard. I think a lot of people forget that part. People forget that part because they just Listen. <laughs> they just want to just like wake up and just no. you know and um, I get it but you know the reality <laughs> is you gotta work hard and so mm-hmm. and, and the, 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 to even go further into what the reality is some of us have to work even harder you know what I'm saying like, I'll be, be trying to tell people I'm like they're looking at me like oh my god I don't want to be an entrepreneur I don't want to work nine to five I don't want to do this I'm like y'all like y'all are acting like it's easier to be an entrepreneur i'm like we work more hours not mm. less yeah. <laughs> like you don't want to work a nine to five i'm working at least a nine to nine right. usually a nine to twelve right so if that's not what you want to do <laughs> it's not gonna work for you right it's a lot of work and people don't understand like you gotta have discipline mm-hmm. and you gotta have Ooh, you just gotta understand discipline. hard work you know if you don't have those, those fundamental like qualities you're gonna have a hard time and Correct. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard regardless. <laughs> it's gonna but be hard regardless. It's gonna be even harder if you don't want to work hard because it's important for real for sure. Yeah. So is this like is this something that you do full time, like full time, full time, or do you have like other priorities? You know, a lot of a lot of the questions that I get is about balance. They're like, okay, you have a podcast, YouTube channel for businesses, you got relationship, you got, you know, friendships in real life. Like, how do you balance it all? I'm like, look, I don't know. I'm here. I just do it. Right. I right. just I just do my best. That's it. Everything doesn't always get done, but I just do my best. So, you know, after seven years, um, seven plus years, I'm, I'm, I'm still not, unfortunately, I'm still not in a place where I can, you know, be as full time as I, as full time as I would like to be. Um, I'm gonna get there soon. Yeah, um, I definitely feel a lot closer to that point than I was e- even a year ago. So um, I definitely feel like it's coming soon. I definitely can't wait till it comes. Um, and I have, you know, my f- I can literally, you know, give my full self and energy and time into my craft. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that things have gotten better, and even in the past year also, and I've kind of been able to um, make. The other things in my life, other priorities and responsibilities in my life work around that. And so um, it's just kind of been a lot easier. I have a lot more time now to, um, it's kind of been like a stepping stone. So the next step will definitely be going full time and and, um, going all the way. But we'll get there. We'll get there. And (laughs) we'll. We will get there. For sure. We will get there. Well, that's awesome. You're doing great. It seems Thank like you. you're you're doing you doing your thing, doing Thank the you. damn thing. Thank okay. <laughs> I always that. like meeting new people, y'all. Can y'all same, tell same. It's just we all be in the same space, and we don't even know. Like, yeah. 
no, be real sure. close to each other and just never know. And we really, I'm, I haven't been out and about because we used to, you know, be at events like every week. Yeah. yeah. Back in the back in the day, mm-hmm. a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I now. I feel like an old man now. Like, yeah, I'm like, we like, don't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we used to be out multiple times a week, you know, networking and stuff. Because once I graduated college, mm-hmm. we, we went to school in Savannah. So once I graduated. Oh, Georgia Southern. Oh, you right were. Right down the street. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I was always in We were at I SCAD. Was yeah. <laughs> we went to SCAD and it kind of, I was very, we were very involved. So I was like overly involved. So I was just used Dope. to like my network of people and everyone kind of knew me because I worked on campus. I was in clubs and everything. So I felt like I have built that network in Savannah, but not in the space that I was coming back to because, you know, I was still in high school, just graduated high school. And then after that, went straight to Savannah. I'm like, I really didn't have time to like go out and meet people outside of the people that I knew in high school. So we kind of like took that time then to start going out networking events he's also a dj so he's like djing stuff and we're just out meeting new people and then all that got shut down i'm like i just like want to keep meeting new people kind of and like keep building my network up it's important for sure i think new people and and the people in general just bring out like different sides of of, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. you learn you learn different things about yourself it sparks like a something in you that you're like i didn't even know that I didn't know that that was inside of me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's a complete shocker now when it comes out and you ain't seen nothing like that in a year. You're like, oh, wait, what was that? For sure. (laughs) Yeah. I love to meet new people. I love working with, you know, creatives, new artists. Um, I did a collaboration a couple months ago before the cover boy rollout started with this um, electro pop uh, trio based here in Atlanta called Reptile Room. But they're really, really dope. Y'all should check them out. Um, but they're really, really dope. I actually got a chance to, um, we met uh, through my job, actually. Um, I actually got a chance to interview them a couple of years back for this little music segment we were doing where we were featured different artists in the city. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we just kind of kept in contact. And a couple of years later, uh, we started talking, well, sometime last year, we started talking about wanting to work together. And they sent over some tracks and I kind of just listened to Listen to them, and there was one that really, really stuck out to me uh, called Heroin. And um, man, when I first heard that that song, I was like, I fell in love with it. And so, and it, it was different for me. Like, it's just as far as like, not as far as like the music I listen to, because like I said, I listen to all different types of music all the time. But it was different in the sense of like, I had never put out a record like that before, mm-hmm. like on my end. So it was definitely challenging, um, just in the sense of like trying to tap into that that world just because and it's at the time I was so focused on Coverboy and so in that mm-hmm. in that space. So like yeah. trying to tap into that other world was um but it was fun though. Like I enjoyed it so much. I had a I had a blast writing and recording it. Um and I think the song is really, really dope too. So yeah, I should definitely check out Heroin, uh Dames, Reptile Room, um, Pretty Boy Freestyle. I did that also, uh, right after that. Right before that, um, I did another feature with uh, my cousin Cartier um, on his new EP. Um, I think that yeah, F, F your opinions and um, so yeah, I've been working, man. I've been working. This is this was all before the Coverboy rollout. So just trying to get people like you know excited to hear the new music mm-hmm. and just kind of like you know yeah, hype it up, yeah, hype get it lit up. with us for sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. So y'all check those out. Period. <laughs> Y'all, I feel like I need some more wine. <laughs> <laughs> but was there anything else that you wanted to share? What's another thing we should know about you? Like, I have a question for you. Would that, Devin, you got questions for us? You got questions for us over there? Yeah, Devin has questions for us. We always do questions from the squad at the end. So. Okay, for sure. I love questions because sometimes I get stuck. <laughs> That's how it is sometimes. So I'm like, hit me with a question and we'd be sitting here talking for a whole nother hour. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I definitely wanted to plug my um, my docu series. Mm. Um, it's called Go Hard. It's a docu series that I that I've been working on since like late last year, and it's another one of those things that COVID had a really big impact on because I had um, a lot of this footage from my previous project D Money. Um, you have to check that out too. It still slaps. Um, it still slaps. It still slaps. <laughs> and I had all this footage from the D money creation from like early 2019 and 
Um, I knew I wanted to, I knew I wanted to put a documentary together for the album, but once COVID hit and like slashed all my plans, mm-hmm. I was just so over it that it took so long for me to get remotivated to even like want to like look at the footage to even begin editing or anything. So yeah, it wasn't until like late late November that I actually put the first episode together, and then I, I like it because it's like there's no I don't feel because at first I didn't know if I wanted to just do like a long full mm. length thing or just kind of keep it on going but i like that i decided to do it how i did it because i feel like there's no pressure you know i can it's just it's mine you know what i mean like there's no deadlines it's no and i could just kind of keep it going i have i still have a lot of a lot of content to, to to go through and and edit but um yeah definitely check it out i edited it all myself um i'm very very proud of it because i learned so much from I mean, I've been editing for years, but like doing that docu series definitely was another whole nother beast. And so, listen, boy, when I tell <laughs> you, I know what you're talking about. Man, it was a lot, but it's dope, and I'm really proud of it. And um, it's 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 gonna we got more episodes on the way, so make sure y'all tap into that. That right there, y'all docu series. That ain't no joke. No, I started not. my little docu series. <laughs> People don't understand. A Ten minute episode can take you like. Three weeks to edit. <laughs> I said I will catch y'all next season. Right, right. It's been like three months since yeah. I put an episode out. And it's like, like I'll whew. catch y'all next season. I did a trailer, and then I think I did three episodes, and I said, "Yeah, it's a lot." Especially I'm gonna catch when y'all. you're not getting paid. <laughs> you gotta just motivate yourself to like. I'm gonna catch y'all in a little bit, yeah. but I kind of like documented the whole process of me starting my business and Mm -hmm. then I never put any of that content out so it was like I like filmed everything from literally the beginning and then I kind of just launched my business and that was it so (laughs) that forgot about the forgot about the footage it's just it's not that I forgot about it I've kind of always been in this space where I'm I just feel like I'm always behind you know because I have so many things that I'm doing Mm -hmm. and I just feel like, you know, my, my editing schedule is not the best. Yeah, because so. it takes so much time. Yeah. So I was kind of struggling with, you know, I was filming is easy. I can set up the camera. I'm organizing all the footage. I'm saving right. it everything. But I just did not allot that time that I needed to sit down and edit. So I'm like, I literally racked up all this content because I was just so big about, oh, I have to document this. Like, I don't want to do this and not film it. But never edit it. Yeah. Never. So... It was just like, it was just there. And then months went down the line and then now we're in a pandemic. And I was like, you know what? No, I got laid off from work. And I was like, look, this is, this is a sign. This is the only sign that I needed to like really work on my business full time. Mm -hmm. Go full, full force. And I kind of like started to film again at that point, Mm -hmm. but then I was editing in real time, like sharing Mm -hmm. my life, like through that whole aspect of it. Cause it was like, that was like. That was, I mean, as bad as it sounds, that was like a trending topic, you know? So it's like, oh, I got laid off from work. Now I'm doing this. Now I have my business. Like, this is kind of how life is going with these new circumstances. So Mm -hmm. I had to like hurry up and like jump on that trend while it was still fresh. But I still had never posted that footage. So I was like, wow, I mean, maybe I'll save it for a documentary. I know I want to do an actual documentary one day, but. Yeah, that'll be dope. I think that'll be dope. I was like. Well, we're gonna do a docu series, and then I kind of like did that real quick, and I was like, "Yeah, no, we're gonna take our time with this one because yeah, it, it takes more time, time than you think." Because yeah, that absolutely. editing, no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no joke. <laughs> it's no joke at all. And I think, I think, and that's why I always, I think people get annoyed by how much I plug the fact that I edit my docu series myself. But I really just try to stress how much hard work goes into it. Yeah, there's even like in the last episode I did, you literally can see me actually editing. I actually talk about how intense and tedious the editing process is yeah. in one of the episodes because people don't understand. They see it and they're like, oh, this is dope. But they don't really get it, mm-hmm. like how much time and effort mm-hmm. goes into They think into it's that. like, boop, boop. Like we just right. having fun dragging clips and doing stuff. I'm right. like, yeah, it's like, no, no, it's not really. It's a lot. It's not really. It's not really like that. And then, God forbid, you know, computer crashes or something crazy. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, life happens. Technology. But technology works against us sometimes yeah more times than not but gotta keep going that's all we can do <laughs> keep it moving keep it moving well i have one question and then Devin, you can hit us with your questions i just want to know what's one thing on your bucket list that could be like creative 
wise or just like a personal thing that you want to do or it could be one of each? Hmm. Oh, it's on my bucket list. Um, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a great question. Um, I'm going to start with personal. Okay. Because, yeah, um, I definitely have never been to Hawaii before, mm. but it's always been like at the top of my list. And I know to some people it's probably kind of whack, but no, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just want to go. I can't wait till the day I'm like literally my feet are like planted in the sand in Hawaii, and I'm just like yeah, I can't. That's always been a dream of mine. And then I think professionally, um, man, it's so much on my bucket list right now. I'll be here all day. But I think um, <laughs> probably the biggest thing would be, um. Maybe meeting Beyonce just because, yeah. I mean, I've, I've got to hold her hand before at a concert, and um, oh, I would die. I've got to see her a few I times. I would pass away. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh. I got to see her a few times. I got to hold her hand before, so that was probably the mm. best five seconds of my life. Um, I would have fainted. I have it on video too. I would have fainted right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I kept it together, but mm. I mean, I just know that the day that I get to actually meet her Mm -hmm. and actually be able to tell her just how much she's inspired me in in my in my life I think then I will know that I of course I would be in a if if I'm in a room where I can meet Beyonce and tell her that and obviously I didn't made it somewhere so hello that's (laughs) that's big that that's I love that both of our bucket lists have to do with traveling (laughs) and Beyonce facts Facts. that's crazy We're yeah. in alignment more than we know. Exacerbate. But yeah, no, I would literally pass away if that woman touched me. <laughs> That's why I'm like, you have a little bit more growing to do before you can achieve this this bucket list item. Yeah, I, that- think I'm, I, think I'm, I'm, I think I'm at a place now where I could meet her and, and, and actually have a conversation without freaking out. I think some years ago, That's I probably good. still would be like... yeah. I would, have a hard time. I, I would be speechless, honestly. Like yeah, everything I probably would still wouldn't know what to say. My brain all at once. Yeah, I would just be like, hey. <laughs> I would have to record a video and just show it to just watch this <laughs> right. first, and then we can talk. Right, I would write a note. Just read that. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, no, sure. but yeah, I love that you want to travel because I also want to travel. So my personal bucket list: I want to go to Paris. Like I really want to attend Paris Fashion Week. Oh, that'd be dope. One year. In you my will. life, you will. Yeah, I'm like that's kind Speaking of like into existence. We gotta manifest these things. Hello, that's <laughs> one of my goals to go to Paris because I mean I studied fashion in college. I'm like yeah, I love New York. I love all these other places, but no, I want to go to Paris. Yeah, no, for sure. Paris is definitely uh, a vibe. Yeah, so I want to do that, and then Beyonce. We all know Beyonce, the Queen B. Queen. The Honestly, I feel like I would not have made it through college without Beyonce. Same. Honestly, because the amount of times that I would just like watch Homecoming when I was in college to kind of just get me through my projects and I was making clothes and, Mm. you know, it was just a lot of just a lot of stuff that I was doing that took a long time. So I could just like sit down, put that on and like just work and get like a huge chunk of work done. So as many nights as I did that. I don't think that I would have made it out without her. So I'm like. On my bucket list, I would love to like have her wear one of my pieces because that just she got me through that literally. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be dope. That's like that's a that's a big bucket. I mean, to meet her would be just enough for me. She, but right. If she put just... something on that I made with my two hands, that would be like next level. So that'd be dope. Yeah, we're gonna speak these things into existence. It's baby. gonna happen. I know that's right. You know, one of these days we're gonna just stumble across the queen somewhere. I don't know. Facts. Gotta be at the right place at the right time. Facts. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It will. I believe in us. I believe in us. Too. I believe in us because we can do anything. We can do For whatever sure. we want to do. For sure. Honestly, look at us. We already doing it. Literally, we already doing it. <laughs> yeah, we are. I feel like I'm. I'm like inching closer yeah. towards things that I want to do. So yeah. that's good. Progress. That's what it's all about. Progress is being made. All sure. right, Devin, hit us with the questions, Devin. That, um well yeah, I know when she when she first sent me your page, mm-hmm. like the first thing that came to my mind, I know you're familiar with him, but Ian Isaiah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Artist. I don't yeah. know why, but like for some reason just like like the pictures and everything on your page just reminded me of him. Oh. But um yeah definitely um like so with that like do you have like who are your top influencers like music wise 
Uh, that's a great question. Um, because I'm so all over the place, man. I love um, that you say that because my life is all over the place. I'm so all over the place, but I feel like <sighs> y'all at the top of the list, I would probably put like, um, hmm. It's hard to pick the top one. It's hard to pick the top one. <laughs> um, definitely, I would. I would definitely say Beyonce. I would definitely say Three Stacks. Um, Beyonce. Three Stacks. The Roots. Um, I'm being nice and sharing. Man, Cuddy. Oh yeah, Kid um, Cudi. Who just really, really inspired me musically? Lana Del Rey. Um, Florence and the Machine, Empire of the Sun, um, Bob Marley and the Whalers, um, Ozzy Brothers. I mean, it's so, it's so much, it's so much. But I, yeah, that's that's, 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 that's a, yeah, that's, that's a good. A that's a good, that was a good top six. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can definitely like hear like a little bit of those influences in the music. Yeah. Um, Eminem too. I forgot about him. Oh, I forgot yeah. about him. Yeah, he was. Um, I mean, he gets a lot of like he gets a lot of hate these days. But man, I feel like if anybody tried to act like Eminem didn't have the run that he did, like yeah, when, when we was coming up, you know, like M was that guy. <laughs> like lyrically, like he's definitely inspired me a lot. So definitely to my list. Yeah, um, I know. Um, watching the watching the Coverboy music video. Like there was that that monologue at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So like, what kind of inspired inspired you to have that speech? Um, you know what? Actually, Lana Del Rey again. <laughs> like, there's a video she did some years back when I was still in college. Um, I think my freshman year of college called Ride, and there was a, a video she did called Ride where um, she kind of had like a, a monologue. Is that the um, one with Asa Rocky? No, one? not it was a different one. Oh. But um, I think it was on that. I think it was on that same album, but um, maybe not. But that yeah, that that video definitely directly inspired it because I just loved how it was. Um, you know, you just didn't click, you just didn't press play, and just like the song started playing, it was like something different, mm-hmm. and it, it kind of gave the whole entire like song and album and everything just like a whole mo- way more layers to it. You know what I mean? And like you kind of learned a lot more about her. I love the fact that she wrote the monologue herself. You know, yeah, I feel like it, it gave me a chance to kind of be more poetic versus like lyrical. Cause I, I think I started. I think initially I started off like writing poems, like when I was a kid. Before I actually like, you know, started writing raps. You know, I think it kind of started off as like more poetry in grade school. And so, just being able to like tap back into that and like be poetic and like um, going like finding the right music to to match for what I was saying and to give people the feeling that I wanted people to feel. Cause I think at the end of the day, like. I wanted people to feel a certain thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Before the song even started, I yeah. wanted people to be in a in a, a space. In a space. Yeah, yeah. So that the song, when it does start and you hear what I'm saying and me popping my shit, it's like you understand why. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um that I think that definitely inspired it. and just life inspired it really. Like twenty twenty itself just was so much that I just needed to I couldn't I couldn't create art after all of that without shedding light and documenting that part of you know that experience you know? Mm-hmm. so yeah and the video is like very cinematic as well so like thank you and i know you said you edit too right mm-hmm. so like um do you watch like, like a lot of movies or tv shows yeah yeah not as much as i, I used to back in the day but um I, I i wish i had more time to but yeah i love watching like movies and tv shows and just getting like just seeing how you Especially since I started editing years ago, you know, you after you become an editor, you I'm sure you know you you watch stuff differently mm-hmm. now. You know, you watch stuff with a different eye. It's like absolutely. Oh, how long did they keep this shot up? Or how, <laughs> how did they transition out of this? Or how did they, you know, what was? How did they bring this in? Or how did they fade that out? And so you know, you, you just you just watch stuff with a different like eye. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Do you have any favorite movies or like any thing that you go back to? Favorite movies, uh, yeah, The Players Club, um, <laughs> Friday. <laughs> I'm kind of ghetto, but uh, I'm kind of ghetto, know. but <laughs> what? No, um, whatever shapes us is what makes us. That's, okay, I like that. I like Listen, that. cheers to that. The cheers to that. Oh, okay. Right. Um, I love what other movies I like. That is okay because you know we be society. having our little ratchet side, but oh, we yeah. do what we gotta do though. Oh, yeah, facts. Oh, I'm black, black. Hello. Um, Minister Society. Um, I love Poetic Justice. Um, Cadillac Records. Um, yeah, man, I love 
I love I love me some some I love me some good movies. Mm-hmm. Bro, I got an idea for a video because you know Clifton Powell got to play Pinky from next Friday. Yeah, he, he's in Atlanta. Really? Yeah, I've seen him like at a couple of events before. So like, I want him like in a video as yeah. Pinky. Yeah, I need the I need the, I need the Jerry curl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need the Jerry curl for sure. If you're gonna if you're gonna be in a video, you're gonna have to give us Pinky. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's dope. Yeah, I'm definitely like. Like into movies and like using them as inspiration, like for like videos and stuff like that too. Yeah. But, um. So like, it, as far as like the music and everything, you're, you're independent mm-hmm. currently. So like, how do you feel about like record labels and like versus being independent? Um, that's a great question. I think that you know, I feel like you just have to figure out what works for you. You know, I feel like you have to. I feel like what's important is for you to decide what kind of artist you want to be or who, you, what kind of artist you see yourself as or what kind of, what level you see yourself as. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, the level that I see myself as and the artist that I see myself as, you know, I see myself as big as, you know, the Beyonce's and the Drake's. And so I, I, I kind of, I know and understand that I can't really get there without a label. Um, but I also understand that I want to remain independent as long as I possibly can so I can continue to build my leverage. And when the time comes, I can negotiate. I'm not stuck in a bad deal or having mm. to sign mm-hmm. my life away or sign a 360. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's important to have good lawyers, good people around you. So when the time comes, you can negotiate and, and sign a good deal. Um, or if you want to stay independent, if, and that's kind of just, that's where you want to, the space you want to stay, then that's fine too. Um, I feel like there's there's pros and cons on both sides. You know what I mean. But I feel like if you do want to go the labor route, you definitely want to make sure that you um, do yourself a favor and like make sure that you got you know your your, your t's across, your eyes are dotted. Your, and pretty much like doing the research before, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So like you know allow them to need you mm-hmm. more than the, the other way around because mm-hmm. other, otherwise you're just gonna be like. Signing whatever is in front of you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just want to keep keep going up so that when a time comes, I can make a decision that's better for me and and know that I'm putting myself in a in a bad situation. So I don't feel like labels are a bad thing. They can be. You know, we've all heard of bad contracts, but mm-hmm. it's also you could be hindering yourself by staying independent. It just depends on what where you at, where you want to be, what's going on. So. You just got to see what worked for you. Definitely, definitely. Allow them to need you. For I sure. like that. For sure. <laughs> leverage. It's all about leverage. I like that a lot. It's all about leverage. I know, I'm, that's kinda, what I've been learning. Kind of how I'm feeling right now, too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it has to do with, like, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but, like, some people, like, need labels mm-hmm. to, like, help them push, but, like, some people, like, such as yourself, like, they know, like, all the, well, not all the ins and outs, but they know, like, the specific things that they want out of their career. Right. So, like, some people, they don't know what they want out of their career. So, like, right. it's easy for them to just, like, go with whatever. Yeah. Right. Basically. Right. You know, I can't wait till I get me a nice record deal where I can <laughs> really execute the, the, the ideas, that, mm-hmm. the creative ideas that I really have that I, you know, that I could use the machine and the budget behind me that could really get, you know, executed. Um, but until then, I love, you know, you got to just trust the process, right? Yeah. And just, like, appreciate, like, where you are in the grind and, like... And go with the flow. Go with the flow. When the opportunity is right, it's going to present itself. Facts. So, yeah, that's why I like to keep telling myself, you know, um, I'm definitely not going to, like, ever put my name on something that's, like, not quality or not, you know... That doesn't look good, mm-hmm. you know. It's, it's independent and as as much as I try to take on as as much as many hats as I try to wear myself and like, you know, you I still have like I know when to like get help elsewhere. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I do a little I do a little graphic design, but I can't like the the cover the cover boy cover I couldn't have done that, you know. So I know when it's like okay, let me reach out to somebody like that can that's 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 an expert at this that can do what I need to do. You Absolutely. Know what I'm so I think it's important to. Wear as many hats as you can, but don't be afraid to delegate. Yeah, reach out if you want the best product, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, that's how, like, everybody starts out. They basically like, because like, when she started out, you can't like really afford to do everything, to get yeah. help from everybody else. Yeah. So you have to like learn everything yourself. Yeah, and so when, when she gets to that level of like, oh, this idea is kind of bigger than what I can do by myself, then you have mm-hmm. to Man, I pretty still, much start collaborating. I literally still record people. People don't even probably wouldn't believe it, but I still record ninety five percent of my music by myself with my own equipment. 
in my closet, like, you know, with my little setup. And it's just like, it's just what I've been doing. So I'm comfortable, but it's also, it saves a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, when you learn how to do something yourself and you don't really need, need these people to, right. why, why spend money that I don't have to spend, right? When I could be. Because it's working. Or like when you get to the level and you need, well, and you hire those people, you know what you expect from those people mm -hmm. exactly. at that point now. Exactly. So. so now you're not that even, part too. you're not accepting nothing that's less than like great work because mm -hmm. you already know what, yeah, but that's absolutely, that's facts. And that's why, especially being a video editor and like shooting a video and having, and literally having like giving somebody the full control of like, and it's like you get the, the, the copy back, it's like. If I say I want this, or if I say this, it's like, but you can't tell me it can't be done. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me like because I, I, I can do it. it I can do it right, right. now. Like but... if I was in the chair, I could do it in ten seconds. But it's like, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's, it's that's, that's that's so true. I think it's so important to really know the ins and outs of every like crevice of your craft because mm -hmm. there's gonna be a point when somebody's gonna have to to take the take the take the reins and, and, and do it and do what you know you could do but you just don't have the time mm -hmm. or the energy or the money or whatever whatever the case is and you kind of have to trust that person to do it but you know what you want you know what you what's in your mind you know what what can be done you know what's possible so you're not going to accept nothing less so that's dope yeah for sure yeah, for sure and then as far as like the, the cover boy ep is there like a specific song that you would recommend for like somebody just Hearing about you. Just hearing about me. Yeah. Uh, man, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like an introduction. An introduction. First impression. <laughs> right. Man, that's always a tough one. Or I'm like, so not even that project itself, but just like anything that you've done. Yeah. I've done. Um, you know, I always, I, that's always been my hardest question throughout my whole, like, throughout all this time. Because it's like, it's like, I feel like listening to just one song won't mm -hmm. be, uh, um, uh, accurate introduction mm -hmm. you know what i mean it won't be enough it won't be you enough can't get the you full can't get the full picture can't get the full picture yeah um so i'm gonna give three songs for anybody that's listening that wants like a full scope um so heroin listen to heroin by me and reptile Rome. listen to um listen to intersections and then listen to up down from the new project cover boy so you got some pop you got some some um some some introspection some 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 real rap and you got some some turn up and that's still not even gonna give you the, <laughs> the full basically scope. just listen to the project right listen to the whole thing listen to the whole thing right right so yeah that's always been a tough one but um yeah yeah hopefully whatever you do listen to first gonna make you want to keep listening and then you naturally just get the Get, get the, the whole story, scope, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, man, I got a, definitely a, an extensive like back catalog. Like this is my fifth project, so there's four other projects that you can could go back and listen to and really, really check me out and and dive in and tap in and all of that. And you should because it's it's still it still slaps. <laughs> it still slaps. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. <laughs> That's it. I know I talked about the the process earlier, mm -hmm. but like um, with like making ideas for um, different albums or just like singles in general. Do you ever think about like, oh, I'm making this song so I can perform it this way or like for this video or it's just like in the moment type thing? Um, I think it's just kind of in the moment. Like I don't think I've ever created a song with like a, a visual in mind that initially, I think it kind of comes like after, after something's kind of more built and then I can kind of, visualize it i think sonically like initially like i'm just kind of like going with the, the music and just like whatever i'm feeling i just kind of like want to write to and kind of bring it to life um but like after they're created there's so like there's so many ideas that went through my head like literally like i can listen to a song now that i've done and like i have like five treatments in my head <laughs> it's like so which one is the best one is like the hard part so yeah well, those are all my questions. Lit. Those were great questions. They were. You know? You got me over here breaking a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> we love putting people in the hot seat here sometimes. Just a little, just sprinkling a little. No, oh, those are dope questions. A little spice. Well, yeah, I mean, this is Dames, the cover boy. 
<laughs> I've been saying that. To <laughs> I find this has kind of become like one of my. Um, I feel like as so like artists, like rappers, as they like continue to like expand their catalog, they just kind of get these like monikers, or, like aliases, mm-hmm. like they just kind of naturally just yeah. attached to their brand. So like Dames, D Money, Coverboy. I wonder what's going to be next. It's all stuck. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it is, it's going to be stuck. Right. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me, man. This has been dope. Absolutely. You know, we love to just explore the city with the creatives and everything. Absolutely. So I really do appreciate you coming here and just sharing a little bit of your story, your projects, what goes into it, the process. You know, the process is a, it's a special process. It's a special it's, process. It's a special part of, you know, everything that we do. So the fact that, you know, we're so humble we're open we're honest about you know the things that we go through i appreciate that i appreciate we can have real conversations so absolutely make sure y'all go follow dames on all of his social media platforms i'll have everything linked down below for y'all listen and make sure y'all support her too we gotta, we, gotta, <laughs> we gotta salute our black women out here that's that's grinding that's you know that's out here working i mean i feel like there's nothing more i said this in like probably my Docu series years ago, but I don't think there's anything more inspiring than seeing a black woman working hard. And I get, I, I saw my mom working hard her life. So yeah, um, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You are, you are touching more people than you know. There's a little black you know? girl right watching right now that is thanking God. Yeah, that she had somebody to look up to. So. Thank keep, you. Keep going. I appreciate you saying that. Because sometimes, you know, you just be living your daily life. You just don't realize, like, how impactful you really are on right. people. And that's, like, really nothing to take lightly. So Yeah, for sure. Thank you for saying that. This has been super fun. Um, like I said, make sure you follow Dames. Follow me. Follow Devin. Everything always linked down below. Make sure you check out the show on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating. Leave us a review. And, you know, we're just going to keep grinding on this side. That's it. We're just going to keep... Keep on with our daily grinds. If you're watching this on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And we will see y'all in episode 37. Make sure y'all tap into that cover 37. boy. 37. What? Cover boy is Please um, tap in. It's out right now. Um, tap, tap, tap in. It's Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, YouTube. Everywhere. Wherever you listen to your music at, tap in. Nine songs, less than 30 minutes, you know. You can be oh, that's good. driving to work and listen to the whole thing. I want to know your favorite songs. Make sure you go check out that Cover Boy short film. That's good. Um, you know, make sure you go check out that Go Hard docu series. Um, this uh, Moby Festival performance it will be up real soon. Make sure y'all stay connected. And, Hello. Um, just stay tapped in and we're plug, it just plug it up. We're gonna plug just, it up. Plug it up. We're gonna keep working. That's how we go. Plug it up. Oh, look. Look. (laughs) Cheers to an empty glass. I got one sip left, so we can do it. (laughs) We needed more wine to sustain us, y'all. We we couldn't keep getting getting up and going back for more bottles. But yeah, definitely check out Dame's working on some real cool stuff. And, you know, just stay connected with all of us. So I have everything linked down below. And yeah until next time oh follow let me tell you this now follow us on our podcast instagram because that's kind of where we're posting everything podcast now so y'all see dames over there y'all will see me over there so make sure you follow hello it's me i'm k nicole all the links are down below but just go keep it up keep keep up with me keep up with us absolutely I love y'all. Thank you for watching or listening, making it to the end of the episode. And until next time, episode 37. See you episode 37. Bye, y'all. Peace.